Uh, this is, um, most of this talk will be on our joint work with Christiana Sony and Tassos Molinos. And at the end, if I have enough time, I will talk about my upcoming work, which is some sort of a follow-up to um, this joint project. I would like to give an overview uh, of the talk at the beginning. So very generally speaking, the goal of this project is to work on algebraic K-theory of ring spectra. I'll actually start by giving motivation for this purpose, for studying K-theory of ring spectra, a motivation that comes from actually manifold topology. And so um, this, this work begins with a construction for adjoining roots to ring spectra. Uh, we show that many examples of interest for this program actually covers, uh, can be covered through this root adjunction formalism. And, and uh, we actually do this with, with a, an interest in topological Huxley homology and algebraic K-theory. In particular, we uh, make a new definition of log THH. We show that root adjunction is log THH et al. And furthermore, we show that root adjunction in, in ring spectra results in an interesting splitting of algebraic K-theory. Through that, we obtain a computation of V1 homotopy of K-theory of the um, P-completed real K-theory spectrum uh, using Asoni's computation of the K-theory of KU. And, and later I'll talk about, as I said, my upcoming project uh, paper where I work on a simplified computation of T2 homology of K-theory of KU, uh, as well as uh, a computation of T2 homology of KU map P, which is the two periodic uh, Morava K-theory spectrum of height one. Okay, so, so for a given topological space U, one may define the algebraic K theory, or al also called algebraic A theory, A theory of U, as the algebraic K theory of the um, suspension spectrum of loops on U, and uh, following Walthausen. And Walthausen shows that for, for a closed differentiable manifold, uh, a theory of M is given in this form, where the interesting thing about this, this equivalence uh, describing A theory of M, or other algebraic K theory of this manifold, is, that, is the fact that it contains the smooth whitehead spectrum as a sum end. So what is the smooth whitehead spectrum? It's a, it's a spectrum built out of pseudo-isotope space of M through some sort of a stabilization procedure. And the interesting fact about it is that it contains information regarding pseudo-isotope space, h cobordism space, and the fermorphism space of M. So here, basically, Walthausen says that, OK, now we have a new direction to study these properties of manifolds, and that's through algebraic K theory, basically. So of course, algebraic K theory often ends up being quite difficult to compute. Oh, the pointer, yeah. Algebraic K theory ends up being difficult to compute. For example, just A theory of the point or the algebraic K, which is basically the algebraic K theory of the sphere spectrum. Uh, ends up being extremely difficult to compute. But at the same time, it's Im very important on its own because a theory of any manifold would contain a theory of the point as a retract, and it would be a module over it. And it also contains further geometric information. So here, basically, Walthausen says that we should have a, um, this should be a goal on its own to understand the algebraic K theory of the sphere spectrum. We should have a program to compute it and so. And the <laughs> yes. Is cohomology for something multi cohomology is known as modulo de Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What? Well. Oh yeah, of course. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying difficult to compute, but yeah, of course. Yeah, there are 
definitely things known about. Um, and, and basically, um, this is a conjecture by Walthausen. He said, it's, it's basically, you know, he takes the idea from chromatic chromatopy theory. It basically says that we should be studying K-theory of um, height and localizations of the sphere spectrum one localization at a time. And Asoni and Rognes make the second conjecture here. Um, they say that, again, taken from um, chromatic homotopy theory, they say that through some sort of a Galois descent idea, we should have um, maybe not any coolants, but um, a height n plus one local equivalence maybe, uh, which would allow us to study the left-hand side, the, the layers of this tower by uh, studying K-theory of Morava E-theories and their fixed points with respect to um, the extension of the Morava stabilizer group. So basically, this gives a starting point to this program. Uh, and the starting point becomes uh, computing the K-theory of the Morava E-theory spectrum. Okay, and... Um, so Asoni and Ragnus considered the n equals one case of this. After making these conjectures, uh, n equals one case, well, first Morava E theory is the complex K theory spectrum, P completed. Of course, they use trace methods, so instead I would always be considering the connective covers. That's one, what one has to do uh, whenever they use trace methods for these purposes. Okay, so the homotopy ring of the complex K-theory spectrum is given in this way with the bot generator in degree two. This is basically bot periodicity. And, and the, the complex K-theory spectrum splits through the Adams sum, and this is a result of Adams, uh, into P minus one copies of the shifted Adams sum, n. and the homotopy ring of the atom sum and is given in this way. This is uh, the periodic class V1, and it's in degree 2, P minus 2. So this is a subring of, of the homotopy ring of the complex K theory spectrum. And in this subring, P minus first power of V1 corresponds to, sorry, P minus first power of U2 corresponds to V1. So if you look at the inclusion of this ring to complex K-theory spectrum, it is a case of root edge junction, one may easily say that. So, um, so the complex homotopy ring of the complex K-theory spectrum, you can say that it's obtained by adjoining a P minus one root to V1 to the homotopy ring of the atom sum. And when I adjoin a root to a ring, I haven't defined it at the level of ring spectra, but uh, when I adjoin a root to a ring, I use this uh, formula, basically. I mean this formula. You, you freely adjoin a variable, and you quotient out by an ideal so that the p minus first power of z would be equal to v1. So z would be your root, right? So this is something you observe at the level of um, homotopy rings. And anyway, so, so the way the, the computation of K theory of E1 or K theory of KU follows is that Asoni and Ragnus first compute the V1 homotopy of K theory of the atom sum. And, <clears throat> and then after that, in a separate work, uh, Christian computes the K theory of the complex K theory spectrum. Again, at the level of V1 homotopy, P has to be larger than or equal to five so that um, the Simitsoda complex exists and is a homotopy associated ring spectrum. So uh, Christian computes the V1 homotopy as well, but I write the result in T2 homology because it's, the result is particularly nice in that case. Uh, because in that case, this root adjunction to V1 basically turns into a P minus one root adjunction to negative V2. So this is a quite interesting and simple result that comes out of these computations. It is, I think, quite surprising because, I mean, 
a height one root edge junction turns into a height two root edge junction. There is some redshift. And why does root edge junction turn into a root edge edge junction? And this doesn't exactly appear at the level of V1 homotopy. Something similar happens, but it's what you see is not as simple as this one. So this is, in a certain way, a quite interesting result. A similar ph phenomena was observed by Hesseholt and Madsen, as well as by Quillen for discrete rings, but this was the um, height one case. This is the first time this is observed in the higher height case. And well, I think I should say that this result is what made us start working on this project because, because this result comes out of this really complicated infinite spectral sequence argument uh, that, that appears in the computation. But the final result is really nice. So whenever you see something like that, you wonder if you can have a more general scenario um, set up uh, so that a result of this form will f follow in a more formal and easier manner. And through that setup, you would try to generalize um, such a result. So that's what we uh, do here. OK, here is a quick um, second motivation for this computation, uh, other than the one that comes from uh, this program of Walthausen, Asoni, and Rugnus. So KU classifies um, virtual complex vector bundles by, by definition, basically. And there is a result of Boss, Dundas, Richter, and Rugnus that says that if you take algebraic K theory of KU, these classify virtual complex two vector bundles. Uh, these are basically vector bundles where the fibers are allowed, are given by the category of complex vector spaces rather than just a complex uh, vector space. So, so that kind of provides a, another motivation for these computations. There's also a real counterpart of this story. Uh, if you take the, um, the real uh, K-theory spectrum, then algebraic K-theory of KO classifies virtual real two vector bundles. And that's why in this work we're interested in computation of this T2 homology of this guy. OK, so, so I'll now talk about the, this, this construction for adjoining roots to ring spectra. It's a quite, it has a quite simple description, actually. So whenever I adjoin a root, I will make these assumptions. M will be larger than 0, and we will be adjoining an empt root. K will be an even uh, positive integer. Uh, it has to be even because we can only adjoin roots to classes in even degrees. So I'll assume that X is an E2 ring spectrum with even homotopy and a chosen class X in degree M K. And this is the class that we're going to adjoin an M root to. So the root will lie in degree K. So we assume X is an E2 ring with even homotopy, but this assumption can be relaxed. Significantly, we are able to um, adjoin these, apply this root edge junction formalism to various examples of E1 rings too. For example, if, if you pick any form of um, BPN, let's say, you don't have to know it's a form that gives you an E3 algebra, we would still be able to apply this root edge junction formalism. Or if you pick um, more of a K theory, we can adjoin a root to Vn um, using this formalism, which I'm going to use later. So, so this works in a more general scenario, but just the descriptions would be more complicated, so I will just stick with this situation. So this, is, um, this notation is how we denote the free E1 algebra over the K sphere. And I don't know if, um, I, I attributed this to Lurie, but I guess generally it might be known earlier than that as well. Um, the fact that when k is even, this is an E2 algebra. Actually, k equals 2 case is very easy to see why this is true. Um, by Snaith's lemma, this is um, the suspension spectrum of loops on S3. 
and S3 is a group because of quaternions. So it has a, it's a group, so it's a loop space, so you, you're looping a loop space, so this is an E2 algebra. Basically. So it's, it's actually quite simple to see it in the K equals 2 case, but it's true more generally. Um, again, I, uh, I'm saying this is due to Lurie also, as well as Han and Wilson. So this free E1 algebra, which happens to be E2, has an even E2 cell decomposition. Uh, which means that you can obtain it by attaching, by starting with the free E2 algebra and attaching these E2 cells to it, um, cells in even degrees. Um, in particular, this implies that because the homotopy ring of X is concentrated in even degrees, uh, then there is an E2 map from this uh, free algebra to X that would carry sigma MK to X. So this is an important piece in the construction. You can also, um, we, we also choose a map from um, S sigma MK to S sigma K that would carry the generator to the mth power of the generator on the right hand side. Right, so, so because sigma K is going to be our root, so you kind of choose this map and Somehow using shearing functors, one, we show that we can um, cho choose these two at the same time. And finally, one may define x adjoint root m through to x through this relative smash product, basically. And because we started with the E2 maps, uh, this turns out to be, this relative smash product turns out to be an x algebra, at least it's a ring spectrum, so that's what we really needed but it's an X-algebra, and if you run the Cunet spectral sequence on this, you see that the homotopy ring of this ring spectrum is doing exactly what we want it to do. It's, it's, it's precisely just adjoining a root um, to X, mth root to X. Okay, so of course we wanted to cover examples, especially I told you that there, uh, we're, we're interested in K theory of Morava E theories. Um, so, so in this case, the, this Morava E theory spectrum as, a, as an E1 ring spectrum can be obtained from um, the n truncated Brown Peterson spectrum by first <coughs> can localizing. Uh, and now we smash it with the spherical width vectors because uh, we need to change the coefficients to width vectors. And then by adjoining an mth root, uh, p, p to the n minus one root to vn. So this is, uh, this ring spectrum can be obtained through uh, root edge junction. So that's an important thing. So this is basically also called en hat, can localize Johnson Wilson spectrum. For n equals one, uh, this gives us that the complex K theory spectrum can be obtained from the Adam sum and via this root adjunction formalism as an E1 algebra. So this is an equivalence of E1 algebras. So one reason uh, we were interested in this root adjunction formalism because when you adjoin a root, you um, you obtain a P minus one graded ring spectrum. So let me say a few things about that. So, so let's look at the, you know, classical case of root adjunction, pick a discrete ring. We are adjoining a root of degree M to R. Uh, in this situation, uh, so this is how I defined root adjunction. In this situation, R adjoint root comes with an R module basis given by one Z up to Z to the M minus one. You can see this as a grading as well um, by assigning one, a, the grading uh, uh, weight of zero. So assign one weight zero and Z will have weight one, right? But this is, and, and then this gives you a grading where all of R inside R adjoint root lies in weight zero, right? All of R is in weight zero. And then the roots have weight one. But this is kind of a funny grading because the mth power of the root will lie in R again. So the mth power of the root 
will have weight zero. So that's why this is a Z mod M grading. And similarly, X adjoint root becomes a Z mod M graded ring spectrum. So one can define, um, well, one can say that a Z mod M graded ring spectrum is a sp spectrum for that splits into a co-product of M factors and it has a multiplication that carries the weight i factor times weight j factor into weight i plus j factor, where these numbers are all considered modulo m, right? So the mth power of the root will lie in weight zero, although it's in weight one, etc. The unit is in weight zero. Of course, the correct way of talking about this is to say that um, we're, we're working in the symmetric monoidal category of Z mod M graded spectra, which is given by the functor infinity category from Z mod M to spectra. So this functor infinity category is just the product category because it's a discrete category. And then you equip this with day convolution monoidal structure and, and a Z mod M graded EN ring spectrum is an EN algebra in this um, symmetric monoidal infinity category. Right? So this is the way to make this precise. So if you look at what day convolution is doing, it's precisely giving you a multipli multiplication of this sort. That's what um, the definitions would tell you. Okay, well, if you look at the free E1 algebra, that's, as an E1 algebra, it's, it's quite obvious from the description of the free algebra that this is a graded ring spectrum, right? It splits and the product respects this splitting. Um, but this also happens to be a graded E2 algebra. Um, and what we do is that we take this, in the definition, you can just take the smash product at the level of mod M graded E1, uh, mod M graded spectra by placing all of X into weight zero, so you can make X into a mod M graded ring spectrum concentrated in weight zero. And then this S sigma MK, you also place it in weight zero uh, in the mod M grading direction. And then you assign sigma K to have weight one. Basically, once you do that, uh, you can take this smash product at the level of graded ring spectra and this X adjoint root acquires a gradient where each piece is given in this way as expected, right? So this is a, this is a mod M graded ring spectrum and in a non-trivial way. It's not like everything is in weight zero and it's a boring gradient. It's definitely not that. Okay, so as a corollary, we obtained that, well, I told you Morava E theories are, can be obtained through root A junction and root A junction gives you a mod M grading. So, so Morava E theory spectrum is a mod p to the n minus one graded uh, E1 algebra. So maybe I should have written here KN localized BPN or something. But anyway, EN hats this, I should think. Um, yeah. Anyway, so these are th these um, Morava E theories have uh, graded E1 algebra structures, basically. This is what it's saying, where each piece is given in a non-trivial way. And for n equals one, this says that complex K theory spectrum is a graded E1 algebra, uh, which is basically saying that this splitting result due to atoms, this is not just, a, ex, just an expression of KUP as a spectrum. Uh, this furthermore equips complex K theory spectrum with, with, a, with a graded E1 ring spectrum structure, basically. Okay, so why do we care about these mod M gradings anyway? So I told you we do this root adjunction and then there's a grading on X adjoint root. And, but, but we wanted to compute K theory in particular TH, right? That was our interest. And so the point is that THH of a graded ring spectrum acquires a canonical grading, canonical S1 equivariant uh, grading, S1 equivariant splitting. This is 
I mean, if you compute the Huxley and where does the splitting come from? If you compute the Huxley homology of a graded ring, then on the uh, Huxley complex, you would get an obvious extra grading. And this is precisely that grading. <laughs> Basically, this is just the spectrum version. You just say, oh, OK, smash products commute with co-products. You see an obvious grading. This is precisely that. And so summarizing what we have in the case, so these are the assumptions I put uh, when I adjoin a root. Um, so x adjoin root will have a grading uh, coming from, so THH of x adjoin root will have a coproduct splitting as an S1 equivariant spectrum, right? So that's what we deduce, and this is somewhat like canonical. It's not trivial or anything. Uh, and so we identify, so we go ahead and identify these pieces, basically. Now we know that there's a grading, we identify these pieces. The first uh, theorem is that when P doesn't divide them, and when X is P local, then, uh, then in this situation, um, we say that this root adjunction resembles a tamely ramified extension, and in this case, the weight zero piece in here, the zero summon, is precisely given by THH of X. So that map actually induces an, an equivalence to its image. Or another, another way of saying this is that this map is the inclusion of a weight summon. So that's the first result. And to identify the rest of the pieces, we make a new definition of logarithmic THH. And so maybe I, now I will say a few things about that. Um, so about the general idea of logarithmic THH, the idea comes from log-derived geometry, where um, in order to consider log poles in algebraic geometry, the idea is to include D log, D log x, if you're thinking, if you want to consider log poles around x, you include D log x in your Kähler differentials, right? So you formally introduce dx over x in your Kähler differentials, and that, that will be your logarithmic Kähler differentials. So, um, so somehow this idea gets to generalize to, log uh, to THH as well, and uh, and Huxley's homology as well. And the way we define um, log THH of x with respect to this class, we get, with respect to a given class, um, is through this formula. Okay, so I'll say, uh, say a few things to, in order to make sense of this formula. First of all, this sign here, this sign here denotes the connective cover, but connective cover in the grading direction. So because these free algebras are connected, you invert this class, it is still connected. Um, it is still connected, uh, sorry, it is still graded, right? So uh, we take the connective cover in the grading direction, so, so you can do that. So this one here, actually, uh, inverting class later taking connective cover, is precisely the log THH of this free algebra with respect to the class sigma. And if you look at what's going on intuitively, this class, um, once you, I mean, I mean you, ha you think, when you think about it, you realize that uh, the Kähler differentials, there's some kind of HKR theorem uh, type of fact going on here, uh, that the Kähler differentials appear in particular dx appear in THH when you, uh, so d sigma appear in THH, and when you invert sigma, you have d sigma over sigma, you have d sigma over sigma square, d sigma over sigma cube, and so and so. So in this, uh, in the THH of the Laurent polynomial, right? So when you, but the thing is that you don't want d sigma over sigma square, you don't want d sigma over sigma cube, you just want d sigma over sigma. So that's why you take connective cover. So you only um, 
have sig d sigma over sigma, but you don't have, let's say, d sigma over sigma score. And so, so, so that's where the connective cover comes from. And it's, a, it's an idea from the classical theory is that you can first define the log THH of the free algebra and then base change through such a map. So uh, again, I put the assumption here that uh, X is an E2 ring with even homotopy. But again, uh, this definition of log THH applies to a more general situation. For example, um, we can define log THH of uh, more of a K theories and so on. So, uh, so, so various other E1 ring spectra, one would be able to define log THH as well using this. So Sanat Developurkar and Tassos Molinos uh, have an ongoing project where they show that this definition agrees with the, the definition of log THH for ring spectra, which is due to John Ragnus. Okay, so we go ahead and show, uh, look at what's going on with respect to log THH and adjoining roots. The thing is that um, the, the, the reason, one reason people consider log THH is that it somehow like behaves better with respect to these ring maps that are not necessarily et al, right? But, the, but they resemble et al extensions. They are like, let's say, tamely unramified. So this is, um, so when P doesn't divide M and when X is P local, we say uh, adjun root adjunction is logarithmic THH et al. Because log THH uh, behaves the way THH behave when you have et al extensions. In other words, THH of X adjoint root is just given by, log THH of X adjoint root is just given by log THH of X uh, with a base change. And because X adjoint root is just the sh shifted copies of X, you immediately obtain that log THH of X adjoint root is given by uh, log THH of X shifted copies. So, so that gives you a complete description of log THH F X adjoint root in terms of log THH of X. But while we're... P times VN, so, so like a, a, a um, yeah, yeah, we can adjoin a root, um, peat root, let's say. Yeah. But in that case, you don't get this. Oh. Sorry, I couldn't follow that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm asking if, if, if you, you, were, you were adjoining roots of things like VN. Yes. If you were to adjoin a root of PVN. PVN, okay, okay, okay. Does that fit in perspective and does that sort of... Ah, uh, if PVN. Does the name to be called it out? Oh. Yeah, if you adjoin, if you're adjoining a root to PVN, uh, but the P minus one root, yeah, it did, it's it still works. I mean, I, we don't we don't um, we don't enforce that to be there. So. Okay. Uh, all right. So what was I saying? Uh, so yeah. So the the goal was to understand THH of X adjoint root, right? And so this gives us a complete description of THH X adjoint root uh, in terms of THH of X and log THH of X, right? So, so in, the, in weight zero, we identified this as the THH of X, uh, the, the weight zero piece in the splitting of THH of X adjoint root. Uh, we identified the weight zero piece and then the rest of the pieces are exactly what's coming from log THH of X adjoint root and 
that's um, given by log THH of x, shifted log THH of x. So, so it gives you a complete identification of THH of x adjoint roots with, with THH of x and log THH of x. Yeah, well, this comes from, I mean, there's again a localization sequence connecting THH and log THH. And this basically comes from that localization sequence as well as the theorem identifying the weight zero piece and the theorem identifying the um, logarithmic autonomous of root adjunction. Okay, so, so looking at the weight zero splitting of THH X adjoint root with THH of X, then uh, we show, one can show that this actually carries over to algebraic K theory. So that's the interesting result from there. Um, this ca carries over all the way to algebraic K theory. Uh, and we obtain that K theory of X adjoint root uh, splits uh, into a co-product with a sum n given by K theory of X. So this M here, I just put it there as a spectrum. Uh, its description would be whatever the description of that would be whatever these guys contribute to, to TC basically when you run the cofiber sequence for TC. So, so this splits K theory of X adjoint root and uh, again if I combine it with a previous result we would obtain that uh, because Morava E theories are obtained from uh, Brown Peterson's and truncated BP through localization and then changing to width vectors, right? Uh, and then adjoining a root. So, so EN is obtained from this ring spectrum by root adjunction. Um, we obtain a splitting at the level of K theory of EN of this form from the theorem above. But of course, one needs to pass to connective covers, etc. So. So you need to do things up to Tn plus one Tn localization, but purity of algebraic K theory guarantees that this gives you equivalences at Tn plus one local K theory. So, so that's why we kind of only can state this at the level of Tn plus one equivalences. Uh, so this is like the passage from in the computation of K theory of Ku. Um, First, you get the computation of K theory of the atom sum and later K, K theory of KU. Uh, and the passage is interesting and, the, and this is saying something about the passage at the higher height case because you would probably want to compute the algebraic K theory of BPN first and then try to obtain K theory of EN from there. So this is saying that at least the passage is the inclusion of a wedge sum and in T, up to TN plus one localization. All right, as I said earlier, we, we have this interest to compute K theory of KO because it classifies real two vector bundles. And, um, and we, we obtain that through the, this splitting at the level of algebraic K theory, actually. So, so we show that, again, P has to be larger than three because we're going to use uh, Christian's computation of K theory of KU. Um, First, we show that the complex K-theory spectrum can be obtained from the real K-theory spectrum uh, P completed by adjoining a square root to alpha. And then therefore, K-theory of KU contains K-theory of KO as a sum n. And we identify precisely what that sum n is in the, in the V1 homotopy of K-theory of KU. So we identify what that sum end is, and that gives you the V1 homotopy of K theory of KO. At the level of T2 homology, you obtain a similar result. T2 homology of K theory of KO. You can also think about KO to be L adjoint a P minus one over root to V1. And at the level of K theory, that um, gives you a P minus one over two root adjoining a p minus one over two root to negative v2. Okay, so I'll say a few things about the proof of this result, which will motivate for what's coming after as well. So 
It also will give you a feeling of how the splitting carries over to topological cyclic homology uh, of KU. Okay, so the splitting of THHKU coming from this graded ring structure that we, um, I claim to exist um, is an S1 equivariant splitting. So it's an S1 equivariant splitting and it's also a finite co-product. So it's at the same time a finite product. It commutes with all limits and co-limits. So it com commutes with homotopy fixed points. It will also com commute with the splitting will also commute with taking uh, take the construction later applying homotopy fixed points. Um, so 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 in the in the fiber sequence defining TC, the middle term, this kind of like splitting comes out of the middle term. It comes out of the term on the right hand side. Canonical map is a map that's constructed just by using the S1 equivariant structure of THH. Uh, so, so it does respect this splitting. Uh, so canonical map will respect the splitting. But the Frobenus in general it doesn't because Frobenus map is like taking P to power so it will multiply the grading by P, right? And so, so it, 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 as one would intuitively expect, it does multiply the grading by P in general. So, it, so in general, the sequence may not split, uh, providing a splitting of TC. So this splitting at the level of THH may not carry to TC. But in this situation, we're working with a mod P minus one grading. So it's very nice, P is equal to one in here. So this Frobenius map does respect the grading. So you have a splitting of the entire fiber sequence here which provides you a splitting of TC of KUP. Again, this agrees, this gives you a splitting of algebraic K theory of KU as well. And one can think about this as the Adams splitting for two vector bundles, uh, if you like two com complex two vector bundles. And what's going on is that um, we, we wanted to compute TC of KO, right? We, under, to, we wanted to understand um, how TC of KO lies here as a subring. And what's going on is that if you go back and follow all the definitions, and so you realize that TC of KO is just given by the factors of this um, product given by the even numbers in here. Okay, so, so you just get the even numbers, that will be your TC of KO. So we can identify that um, using the, the group action on KU given by the Adams operations. Um, so that gives you this, this delta weight on K theory of KU. So that agrees with this weight splitting. And so we were able to track it using Christian's comp. Okay, uh, so from that, I move on to um, results from my upcoming work. So this is, again, uh, about having a simplified proof of this theorem that comes out of the computation of the V1 homotopy of K theory of KU. Uh, it's saying that it's at the level of T2 homology, that's just a root adjunction. So what we do is that we first, uh, I first take the construction of this class from Christian's work, uh, this class B that Christian calls the higher bot element. This is actually, later he shows that this is actually this root of negative V2. Um, and this is constructing to using uh, this map from the second Allenberg McLean space into the units of KU. So de-looping this map, you obtain a map from the third island mark McLean space to the, to, to the de-looping of the units and therefore to algebraic K theory of KU, right? And this class actually comes from um, uh, Ravenel Wilson computations of Morava K theory homology of island mark McLean spaces. And again, from that computations, it follows that this class actually 
this class B satisfies this equality, right? So this equality kind of gives you the feeling that this is close to being a root, but it's not exactly a root, right? So B kind of wants to be a root, but that's not visible at the level of um, T2 homology of, of the, this eilenberg maclean space. So, but anyway, so we take the construction of this class, and what happens is that basically in order to show that this class is actually a root, you would have to go through um, all the, um, the you, you would have to go through the infinite spectral sequence argument in the computation of algebraic K theory of KU. And so, so here we kind of uh, use another route to direct, directly go to the T2 homology of algebraic K theory of KU. Uh, so that, uh, so, so this, our methods provide this one, but it may not provide the V1 homotopy theory of algebraic K theory of KU. Um, for that, you would either still have to look at the um, infinite spectral sequence argument of Christian or maybe the motivic spectral sequence, probably. Okay. Um, all right, so first thing we do, we show that B lie lies in weight one. Okay, so that's a weight one class. Furthermore, this, um, where I said K KU U is a mod P minus one graded ring spectrum. We show that this lifts to a graded infinity ring structure as well. So this, so at this point, there are many proofs of this. Uh, I realized one is in, in, the, in the paper I use the, the Fourier transform technology by, that's by, by uh, Karmilish Lankianowski. Um, it basically says that using the group action in this situation, you can have, um, you can have this grading given by the ba basically um, uh, eigenspectra uh, given by coming from the group action. Or um, one might, uh, one should be able to use Tommy Lundem and Tommy that um, these infinity polynomial ring spectra used in the work of uh, Ragnar Sagavis Schlichtkrull, they can also be used in the situation to obtain this uh, graded infinity ring structure. Okay. Anyway, so there is a graded infinity ring structure on KUP. And that gives you a graded infinity ring structure on topological cyclic homology as well. Um, again, in general, you wouldn't be able to do this, but because P is equal to one in this case, the Frobenius maps do respect the grading. So you do have an infinity ring uh, structure on TC as well. And what we do is that we use logarithmic THH uh, Actually, the, the computation is due to Ragnar Sagavich Lichtkrull. Uh, actually, lo logarithmic THH of uh, KU turns out to be way nicer than THH of KU because of the, um, the log THH autonomous result I told you earlier. So that case actually, I should have t said that, that case of logarithmic THH autonomous for the map from Adam cement to complex K theory was already proved uh, in this work of Ragnar Sagave and Schlichtkrull. Uh, so, so, so that was already known. And anyway, so, so we use these computations uh, and there's one equivariant structure on logarithmic THH to prove that B uh, represents a unit in the T2 homology of TC of KUP. Therefore, B has to be a root of negative V2, because if B is a unit, then this part has to be zero. Uh, so we have that, it's a root. Now the theorem, um, Christian's theorem follow once you get together these three facts, right? So TC is a graded ring spectrum, P minus one graded. Weight zero part is given by TC of LP. That's the TC version of the K theory splitting result I mentioned earlier. 
uh, the B is a class in weight one and it's a unit. So when you have a graded ring, so this T2 homology is a graded ring, uh, but not, I'm not talking about the grading in the homotopy direction, again, grading the mod P minus one grading I've been talking about. So in the mod P minus one grading direction, you have a unit of weight one and the situation in the classical case also applies, right? If you have a graded ring with a unit in weight one, that graded ring would be periodic, right? So you just have to know the weight zero piece of your graded ring. So that's kind of the classical idea it also applies here. So we know the weight zero piece because of the result in the joint work and there's a unit in weight one. So that gives you a complete description of T2 homology of KUP uh, through this formula, it's, it's basically periodic. Okay, so, uh, and these results quickly combine to give a computation, uh, give another computational result. First, I should mention that in another work um, of Asoni Ragnus, they compute the V1 homotopy of K-theory of, of the first more of a K-theory spectrum. Here we consider the T2 homology of KU map P, uh, KU map P being the two periodic Morava K theory of height one. And as expected, this is given similarly here. I don't use the root adjunction notation simply because this is not a ring, right? K1 is just an E1 ring, so this is not a ring. It's the root adjunction notation would look meaningless. We would be meaningless, but similarly, we can express this in terms of this relative tensor product, which is basically saying that T2 homology of K-theory of KUP is again shifted copies of T2 homology of K1. So now this actually fo follows from very similar considerations and constructions. Um, so now KU mod P is an E1 KUP algebra in graded spectra. We, we can construct it that way again using these polynomial algebras. And therefore, TCKU TC map P is a module over TCKU, uh, right? But it's a module over this E1 algebra in mod P minus one graded spectra. So, so, so it's, yeah. So in mod P minus one graded spectra, this is an E1 algebra. And this is a module over that, so you can think about it that way. And we show that um, there's an equivalence of mod P minus one graded E1 rings. KU mod P is equivalent to K1 adjoiner root. And then the result follows from the following facts. TC KU mod P in weight zero, so this is, um, in, uh, this is all, as a P minus one graded object. In weight zero, this is given by TC of K1 because of this root adjunction here. And again, there's a unit in, in T2 homology of TC KUP of weight one. So what happens is that T2 homology of KU map P is a module over this ring, right? But this ring, this P minus one graded ring, has a unit in weight one. So you got this classical situation again. If you have a graded ring with a unit in weight one, every, every module would be one periodic, right? So you just need to know weight zero. And weight zero is given by the previous theorem, so you obtain the entire object. Okay, so I stop here. <laughs>